yes today we are going to study about the another topic known as g6 pedi deficiency and in which we mainly go through the several uh, topics like uh, in this we can go through the introduction etiology and the clinical features regarding this and the diagnosis and also the ass assessment and uh, sometimes uh, or also go through the treatment or the ms section and the process of lionization and the five hacks or the five important points regarding this okay and uh, for the introduction we can see uh, the first uh, we understand we should understand what do we mean by this g6pd this g6pd is an enzyme known as the glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme which is mainly a enzyme of what hmp pathway uh, hexose monophosphate pathway and this hexose monophosphate pathway uh, has the mainly functions like it uh, is responsible for the generation of what NADPH it uh, is responsible for the what generation of generation of what NADPH NADPH and what is the role of NADPH this NADPH is responsible for mainly what uh, reduction of glutathione and this glutathione reduction reduction of this glutathione is important because it is responsible for protecting the rbc membrane from the oxidative stress okay and uh, normally this nadph has uh, mainly the two functions we can study mainly the two functions this uh, are like we uh, which is response and this is mainly responsible for maintaining the iron in whatever it forms in the hemoglobin like uh, they are mainly present as the uh, hemoglobin as the ferrous state and uh, uh, ferrous state keep the iron in the ferrous state not in the ferric state okay not in ferric form okay and also it can protect uh, from the several oxidative damage and they are mainly the x-linked disorders and uh, most commonly seen in the males okay and uh, we can see the several etiology or the several uh, etiological features which can be precipitated as the uh, bleeding or the hemolysis in the in this disease uh, in this disease like several antimicrobial drugs like uh, the primaquine or the quinine which are mainly used in uh, the disease like uh, malaria and also the malarial parasite can precipitate this type of disease and uh, the others like most commonly also the infection may precipitate uh, this type of uh, acute hemolysis in this g6pd deficiency diseases and sulfonamides like sulfosalazine and uh, dapsone which is mainly used in the laparostic disease or the sulfosalazine mainly used in the rheumatoid arthritis or other inflammatory disease and uh, or like uh, they are mainly the immune suppressive drugs and this uh, several immune suppressive drugs may uh, causes the acute or the episodic hemolysis in this type of disease and uh, antibacterial drugs like uh, like nalidexic acid ciprofloxacin and uh, several analgesics when it can be taken on uh, more than the one gram per day it can also leads to the uh, g6pd deficiency disease or causes the acute hemolysis in this type of disease and the several the uh, several the other drugs like the miscellaneous uh, drugs like the vitamin k analog or the naphthalene ball or the naphthol naphthol and uh, also the faba beans may causes uh, this of the intravascular hemolysis and sometimes uh, the other diseases which can be precipitated this kind of disease like uh, several infections may precipitate it and the severe diseases serious diseases known as the diabetic ketoacidosis which can also lead to the bleeding or the hemolysis in the patient we can go through the several clinical features or in the clinical features we can see it is the sudden onset okay and uh, the patient may uh, like due to the break or the due to the hemolysis the patient may present to you in the ed as uh, the patient may have the uh, severe pallor or uh, the severe pallor or the abdominal pain also and uh, back pain may also present to you as the back pain and sometimes 
also the uh, if uh, the patient have any infectious etiology it may present uh, you as a fever uh, as a clinical features uh, so before treating a patient you go to the treating the patient you should rule out the treatment cause uh, you should rule out the uh, normally the infectious cause and uh, like uh, if the patient may have the infectious cause you can go to uh, go for uh, go to the antibiotic for the treatment of this disease and first in the, in the main root or of the root of the treatment is that uh, first we should understand there is no any particular or the no any specific treatment for this disease and for the for the treatment of this disease uh, we can uh, go to the like several uh, the etiological like uh, if the patient has taken any drugs which can may precipitate this type of uh, causes like uh, dark urine or the hemo uh, or several hemo hemolysis you can go and stop this particular drugs okay and monitor every time whatever the hemoglobin in the blood or hemoglobin can seen in the urine also okay and uh, the patient may also has the features of hemoglobinuria and also hemoglobinemia is also there and uh, the and the dark urine may be there this dark urine is due to like urobilinogens and the hemoglobinuria and uh, the patient may uh, pres uh, may uh, present to you uh, may present to you as the features of jaundice like uh, yellowing of the sclera and also the skin of the uh, different uh, skin of the uh, skin of the uh, different parts and the different parts like uh, starting from the neck and hands they can present you in a severe uh, jaundice features and mainly this uh, jaundice is indirect bilirubin can be increased or the unconjugated bilirubin may increase during this condition okay and the last uh, due to this uh, uh, how can you observe the there is the features of any intravascular hemolysis and uh, for the intravascular hemolysis you can see the decrease the hepto, uh, heptoglobin uh, and first we understand what do you mean by heptoglobin and this heptoglobin is mainly produced by a, a liver it is a it is a protein okay and this protein is uh, i think uh, this protein is highly affinity this heptoglobin has what higher affinity to bind with what free hemoglobin okay because free hemoglobin is dangerous for dangerous for our cells because it can cause oxidative damage more oxidative damage to the different cells so for the prevention or getting prevention from this type of the free hemoglobin or the oxidative damage in our blood it, it can also have the heptoglobin which can normally bind to this particular free hemoglobin and reduce their uh, oxidative uh, and deteriorate or inhibit the erythrocyte deteriorating oxidative damage okay and uh, it can be engulfed by what macro phage and this macro phage kill this particular uh, heptoglobin with uh, he this free hemoglobin and as this free hemoglobin can be damaged or can be break down this free hemoglobin can generate what heme and this heme can gen uh, can produce iron and when this iron can bind to what albumin okay this iron can mainly convert into what form ferrous form to ferric form and it can generate what methemoglobin and this methemoglobin give the special test or the special important test known as the sums test sums test it is methemo not methemoglobin methemoalbumin methemoalbumin okay and also due to the uh, rupture or the damage of this uh, cell erythrocyte it can generate what it can produce the large amount of the ldh or lactate dehydrogenase enzyme and uh, may also present at the due to the damage of this it can also uh, due to the excess hemolysis the patient uh, may present you the hemoglobinemia or the hemoglobinuria 
and uh, we can already understand how this methamoglo metham metham albumin can be produced okay and we can go to the several lab features in the lab features if the patient uh, like uh, in the two points we can understand the there is any intravascular hemolysis along with the hemorrhage like if the patient had the normocytic anemia along with the reticulocytosis we can uh, uh, we can uh, go or point on the uh, single uh, uh, differential diagnosis or the, you can diagnosis as a as a uh, intravascular hemolysis hemorrhage okay and in the blood film we can see several polychromatia bite cell or the hinge bodies in this condition and in this image section we can see hinge body and in the hinge body you can see this bluish structure this bluish structure with the yellow uh, greenish background okay this is known as hinge bodies and what do we mean by hinge body this hinge body is due to the oxidative stress it uh, the him uh, whatever the hemoglobin is there it can be denatured and precipitated along with the iron no this precipitated or denatured form of this is the denatured or precipitated form of what hemoglobin and this is known as the hinge body and they are mainly seen in g6pd deficiency disease and also due to the uh, due to the severe hemolysis the uh, in the blood blood it can develop the several reticulocytosis can be there and due to the reticulocytosis increase in the blood and if we take the peripheral blood smear we can see the polychromasia on the histopathological examination and this polychromasia is the sign of what reticulocytosis and these are mainly seen in this uh, or in these are mainly seen in the se uh, several hemolytic anemias or the hemolysis syndrome okay like intravascular hemolysis or the extravascular hemolysis and also the patient may present what dark urine and this dark urine is due to what due to the two things first due to the hemoglobinuria and the second is the unconjugated bilirubin increase in this urine okay and for the assessment of this disease uh, for the assessment of the g6pd activities we can go through the several qualitative and the quantitative type of tests like uh, in the qualitative we can go to the crisile blue decolorization test and also a spectrophotometry and uh, if you know um, further know about this type of or uh, in the detailed in the qualitative and the quantitative you can uh, comment me on uh, my youtube and i will give the proper information or the more information about this qualitative and the quantitative type of uh, in uh, qualitative type of tests okay and uh, we can also go to the management and the treatment process like uh, first uh, we should rule out the uh, infectious causes if you rule out the infectious causes you can ask the patient which drugs or uh, which the uh, earlier drugs has taken by the patient okay if the patient has taken any drugs which can precipitate this type of acute hemolysis like the it has uh, if the patient can taken the uh, malarial drugs like also, also immunosuppressive several immunosuppressive Perceived drugs or like the diets like fiber you should uh, you should ask the patient and uh, ask the patient to stop these drugs immediately because it can causes what acute hemolysis so uh, we are requested or we are asked the patient to stop that particular drugs and also we can monitor the hemoglobin time by time to rule out this uh, or to prevent them from going into the uh, several others uh, like uh, risk uh, several other risk uh, to prevent them from the several other uh, life threatening risk okay and in the third we can also ask the patient to do a bed rest along with what uh, and ask the patient or the patient uh, and for the uh, blood transfusion urgent blood transfusion if any requirement of that particular type of this okay and uh, we can also uh, understand about the lionization processes like in this lionization processes what do you mean by lionization process it normally the inactivation like this is the x or x chromosome 2 x chromosome and uh, uh, this lionization say due to the inactivation of this particular 
दिस पार्टिकुलर दे आर मोर प्रोन टू और मोर रिस्पॉन्स मोर प्रोन टू दिस पार्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ द डिजीज ओके बिकॉज दे आर द एक्स लिंक्ड एंड इफ दिस मीन्स इट कैन शो वॉट टाइप ऑफ कंपनसेशन इट शो द डोजेज कंपेन session and what do you mean by this doses compensation this doses compensation means equal uh, normally the expression whatever the expression of the gene or the character in the patient uh, in character or gene in the male or the female they can mainly equalize their expression or they have the equal expression of uh, if uh, equal expression of male or the female uh, but uh, having the same species okay and if you know more about this lionization you can also comment me on the youtube and i will give the proper and the more information about this type of lionization process okay and uh, further we can understand the five hacks or the five important points like the hinge bodies and in the hinge bodies we can also uh, see like bite cell and understand why the bite cell is there because uh, in, if there is like understand if there is the hinge body like you can already see this hinge body when it go to what the go through the spleen okay the splenic macrophage the macrophage this splenic macrophage is responsible for taking this uh, uh, because they are the not uh, very useful substances in body is not the useful substances so the body uh, the macrophage get out get rid of this type of uh, the, get the read, uh, get rid of this type of the substances uh, they go to the splenic macrophage and remove the particular um, particular Uh, hinge body and they may present as the bite cell means it can be taken off this is mainly taken off by this macrophage and it may present to you as a this type of rbc is there this is known as the bite cell okay and also uh, the it is mainly at the x linked recessive and uh, there may be due to the episodic hemolysis and also the oxidant or the several infections may lead to this type of disease and the bite cell and the blister cells and the peripheral on the blood smear and if you can see the normocytic anemia with reticulocytes we may point on the acute hemolytic hemorrhage okay uh, thanks for watching and please do subscribe and like my channel and share with your friend thank you